to our AI Machine Learning Seminar. Today we have uh, one of our own graduate students, Junkyu Lee. Uh, he uh, just uh, finished uh, his, uh, his uh, he just graduated uh, in December. And he will talk about his thesis work, uh, Decomposition Bounds for Influence Diagram. Welcome, Junkyu. Yeah, thanks very much for introdu introduction. So today in this talk, I'm going to talk about uh, mostly uh, contents in my uh, dissertation uh, with the same title, Decomposition Bound for Influence Diagrams. So let me just begin. So this presentation is divided into three parts. The first one is backgrounds, and the second one is about uh, three decomposition methods for influence diagrams. And lastly, it's about computing the upper bounds for the maximum expected utility in influence diagrams. So for the backgrounds, uh, this is an outline. So we will first review some basic concepts in influence diagram, graphical models, and reasoning tasks. And because this talk is about decomposition bounds for uh, a spe special kind of uh, graphical model called influence diagram, I would like, I would like to point out uh, existing decomposition bounding methods in probabilistic graphical models. And then uh, I will wrap up background by pointing out some earlier works in influence diagrams. So uh, this is a kind of very famous example influence diagram called wild oil cattle problem, where let's say that an oil company is trying to make a sequence of decision whether to test on a certain location to invest some money for uh, drilling oil. And then the next decision is gonna be whether to actually drill on that location or not. And finally, uh, the last decision is gonna be depending on the earlier observations and decisions like oil produced, uh, making some kind of oil sale policy. In this case, uh, in this kind of problem, we may want to incorporate uncertainty information like test results, seismic structures, and so on. And at the same time, we may want to optimize or maximize our profit uh, that's captured by reward functions or utility functions. So in this kind of diagrams, the chance variables are drawn as circles and the decision variables are drawn as squares and probability functions are conditional probability functions, likewise in the Bayesian network and utility functions are defined over the chance variables and decision variables. And the policy functions are all associated with each individual decision variables. Under the perfect recall assumption, where we assume that an agent will never forget the past, the policy function is going to be defined as a, a conditional property functions uh, from uh, history to the decision. The standard task in inference diagram is computing the maximum expected utility, uh, simply just to find out the highest number of the expected utility and uh, possibly finding out the set of optimal policy functions that's uh, providing the MEU. Uh, when it comes to limited memory inference diagrams, where we relax the previous assumption that agent will never forget the past, here we show that the gray arcs that's uh, injecting into the decision variables, uh, now we allow the agent to, to forget the past. In that case, the policy functions may not depending, of course, not depending on the history, but it's going to be depending on the direct parents of the decision variables. So in this talk, uh, unlike conventions in inference diagrams, uh, I will assume that all the information or arcs that's uh, going to be available explicitly in the diagram. In other words, if it were perfect equal inference diagram, I should have draw all the information or arcs to the decision variables. And when it comes to limited memory inference diagram, we skip that arcs. So now we will briefly just review uh, some uh, basics in graphical models. Uh, graphical models is by, uh, de defined by a tuple of a set of variables, domain so functions that's defining uh, uh, global functions combined by combination operators like uh, multiplication, summation, and possibly join depending on the context. And reasoning task can be in the end formulated as a eliminating variables from the uh, joint functions where we can use elimination operators, summation, maximization, or minimization, depending on the uh, problem context. So for example, uh, on the left-hand side, we see a, a Bayesian network that is a kind of very famous graphical model 
that's factorizing the joint probability functions as a product of uh, conditional probability functions. In most of the graphical model algorithms, we extract a primal graph uh, that is capturing the dependency between uh, the variables. Here, we from here, primal graph, we move to other algorithms. And before getting into uh, a little bit more detailed algorithms, uh, let me just overview the probability reasoning problems or inference tasks in uh, graphical models. So first off, uh, one uh, common uh, task is max inference or MPE. That's finding the mode of joint function. And the next one would be sum inference or computing the partition function that's uh, actually performing numerical integration on the joint function. And the mixed inference is uh, combining both maximization and summation into a single task. Uh, and lastly, we have a MU task that's computing the maximum expected utility uh, that involves both probability and utility functions. All those inference tasks are difficult problem, but in practice, we see that the difficulty gets become you know, harder and harder if we go down below here. And especially MU is uh, recognized as one of the uh, most uh, difficult inference tasks in graphical models. And because of that, we often interested in computing the upper bounds and lower bounds. And now, because this presentation is about decomposition bounds in inference diagram, let me just point out uh, relevant uh, uh, works in graphical models. When it comes to max inference, uh, we have dual decomposition uh, method as well as moment matching methods over the joint graph. And when it comes to sum inference, uh, we have a weighted mini bucket methods uh, for the uh, summation task. And lastly, we have a mixed inference task, uh, decomposition bounds for mixed inference that's combining two ideas from your decomposition and weighted mini bucket. So later on, uh, we will just very briefly go over very high level ideas on all these kinds of decomposition bounds in graphical models. So let's begin with the exact method in graphical models. Let's say that we have a joint function fx. Uh, we combine these small local functions by multiplication. And on the right-hand side, we have a primal graph that's capturing the dependency between the variables. Essentially, we are eliminating all the variables from these uh, joint functions to compute uh, the normalization constant in this example. And this procedure can be seen as a performing dynamic programming and variable elimination implements the dynamic programming in this way. So in the end, what we have is gonna be sub problems or clusters that's uh, collecting the relevant or uh, local functions necessary for solving sub problem to get to the final answer. And we can arrange those sub problems as a tree uh, connected by uh, messages that are uh, sending intermediate uh, results of this elimination operation. So this is an exact task and it captures the complexity by the maximum size of the clusters, uh, which is called the tree bits. And for the approximations, uh, we can bound the complexity by splitting uh, large buckets. Uh, what's happening behind the scene is that we are introducing auxiliary variables and uh, auxiliary constraints uh, that's enforcing the equality between or uh, random variables D in here and there. So it's kind of a very common uh, idea in optimization. And in this way, we can bound uh, the overall complexity by the maximum cluster size in this mini bucket tree. Uh, we call it as I bound. And for the summation task, uh, we can of course repeat the same idea again here. So we given a, a inference task, we just come up with a mini bucket tree by splitting some of the buckets if a bucket is too large and we introduce uh, duplicate random variables and constraints. But here the work on weighted mean bucket elimination is about introducing a new uh, elimination operator called power summation operator by using uh, the Helder's inequality. So it's essentially LP norm uh, and we could view this as a kind of uh, splitting functions in a fractional way rather than just uh, one and zero. And by doing this, uh, we have some nice things like, first off, we can handle maximization and summation in a unified way. So that's entering the marginal map task later on. Uh, 
And often the case that it's generating the tighter bounds than a uh, live mini bucket bound. And then we also have an opportunity to optimize this upper bound by changing these uh, parameters. We call those uh, parameters as weights. And when it comes to max inference, we have a dual decomposition for uh, uh, MPE or uh, max inference. So again, the idea is the same here. We split all the you know, functions all the way down by duplicating everything if it shares a variable. And uh, we can see this is a, some kind of ex extreme case of applying a prime mini bucket relaxation. And of course, this technique has many names, uh, for example, Lagrangian decomposition or dual decomposition and so on. So overall main idea is that again, we introduce uh, uh, constraints and auxiliary random variables, and we have access to a smaller relaxed task uh, that often can be computed exactly because uh, the complexity became smaller after splitting. And that's upper bound. So we minimize it by uh, optimizing for the additional parameters introduced together. So this kind of uh, uh, patterns of uh, relaxing and tightening is very common in uh, decomposition methods in graphical models. So when it comes to mixed inference, that's uh, using both summation and maximization at the same time, uh, we can combine the previous uh, generalized uh, summation uh, that's covering both summation and max and the dual decomposition. So it's called the generalized dual decomposition method. And uh, briefly, I'm not going to go to the into the too much technical details, but the idea is again that given those uh, elimination operators, uh, we can uh, decompose the problem and uh, solve a certain optimization problem in the end. So we will see more examples in the later on in the context of inference diagrams. And now uh, we will give you some more uh, specifics in inference diagram the, in the context of the inference diagrams. First off, when it comes to decomposing inference diagrams as a tree of sub-problems, uh, the earliest approach, maybe one of the earliest approaches is gonna be constraint junction tree algorithms for inference diagram. So in earlier days, uh, because of the presence of the utility functions in the problem, uh, people wanted to come up with some kind of method uh, that can somehow transform uh, the computation of MU as similar to the computation in uh, the graphical models or progressive graphical models. In other words, uh, uh, people wanted to handle uh, this MU task in a single uh, combination and uh, elimination operations and so on uh, that we will see more in detail later on because it's very related. But this kind of earlier method is known to be suboptimal in the sense that it's not really capturing the tight, tight, tightest subproblem in the inference diagram. Later on, we have a MZ DAG or a, a rule based method that's identifying the tight, tight subproblems in the inference diagram. But all these decomposition methods are relying on variational elimination algorithms. So it cannot be applied to the limited memory inference diagrams. So when it comes to more general limited memory inference diagrams, uh, people identify the subclass of those uh, diagrams that can be solved by variable elimination. In, the, in this case, it happened to be uh, somehow the same as perfect recall inference diagram because of the structure in the problem. Uh, since the previous decomposition method didn't apply to the limit because they are all relying on variable elimination, uh, most of the work is about uh, 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 designing local search algorithms that's uh, optimizing for the subset of policy functions in an iterative way. When it comes to computing the upper bounds of MEU, uh, one principle is information relaxation. So in, in other words, it's very common that we can always bound uh, the maximum expected utility of a PAMDP or partially observable uh, problem uh, by fully observable problems. The, the idea is the same. In many cases, if we allow more observations to decision, we may come up with a, a easier problems, not always, but many cases. And when it comes to limited memory inference diagrams, there are no uh, actual algorithms, but there are some theoretical bounds that came out from the complexity analysis. And lastly, the other thing that we can do is translate MU task in inference diagram 
with perfect recall as a mixed inference or marginal map, or we could uh, try to uh, define a mixed integer linear programming problems out of the inference diagram. So it's a translation-based approach. So when it comes to translation-based approach, then it's not really introducing any expo ex exponential blow up, but it's a polynomial reduction. So in other words, uh, people may expect that the resulting size of the problem may be moderate, but in practice, uh, the problem is already very difficult. And then if we do this kind of translation, it ends up defining very, very difficult problem that doesn't provide any practical bound for the interesting problems. So uh, in this talk, we move to the main part, uh, which is on first part is about pre decomposition for inference diagram. And then the next one is going to be uh, completing the upper bound. Uh, the outline of this part is first, uh, I will show some concrete example on the earlier works on constraint joint tree decomposition uh, that's relying on some uncertain methods called the validation algebra. And then I will uh, briefly introduce a new decomposition scheme called some model tree decomposition by example. Mm. So first off, what is the valuation algebra? So let's consider a very simplified wild all white right cat problem here. And the goal is essentially computing uh, this expression. So maximizing decision and uh, some, some uh, eliminating the summation variable and so on. The complication is here in the additivity functions that doesn't really combine well with uh, multiplicative property functions. So one way of dealing with this complication is to use uh, a valuation algebra or potential representation that's uh, carrying pair of probability and utility functions or expected utility functions together. And uh, we just redefine all the combination, marginalization, compar comparison operations, all the pairs. And then in this way, algebraically, we can recover the representation very similar to the probabilistic graphical models where we just alternate elimination operators and then one single combination operators. So because of this, uh, we can reuse all the methods in the graphical models, for example, tree decompositions and so on. So if we apply the bucket elimination or variable elimination for uh, the same example with valuation algebra, then it's gonna be exactly the same as we were solving the previous probabilistic graphical models. The only difference is that now we just process pair of functions in the place of a single function. And it looks very good at this point. And, and the complexity is captured by constraint in UC. And then again, so we can apply, transport all the ideas in the probabilistic graphical models uh, by relying on the variation algebra. So for example, it's common that we identify tree and relax the tree and come up with a graph structure called the joint graph. And these kind of graphs are basis for the message passing algorithms. So in the end, we can pass around messages in between the clusters and so on, depending on a uh, specific algorithm. So it sounds okay at this point, but uh, it is well known that the previous approach is not really capturing the tightest subproblem because the method is relying on uh, the dynamic programming or variable elimination in the end. And so now we will move to the sum model 3D composition. So the motivation for uh, this new 3D composition method that appeared in the last weekend in AAAI. Uh, first, we wanted to have a graph-based method for decomposing inference diagram as well as limited memory inference diagrams uh, means that uh, here we can remove some uh, unnecessary restrictions appearing in the earlier approaches. In earlier approaches, uh, there are assumptions like there is always going to be one decision variable for one time step, and there is going to be a, direct, a total pass between decision variables and perfect recall assumptions and, and so on. And then by having a tighter sum model tree or tree decomposition uh, uh, algorithm, we can essentially extend existing trickle string framework in uh, reasoning in graphical models. Uh, let's say that we can identify subproblems, uh, 
and we can come up with the exact algorithm and we can better characterize the complexity. So before introducing the um, some more the 3D composition for inference diagram, so we, I just may introduce a few basic concepts. Uh, the first one is partial evaluation or local MU. So this can be seen as evaluating the whole, only uh, part of the inference diagram. So on the left hand side, let's say that we have a inference diagram with three decision variables, and this is a limited memory inference diagram that doesn't assume a perfect decode. Uh, rather than trying to compute MU for the global problem, we may want to focus on uh, only these two shaded uh, decision variable and utility functions. And uh, the maximum out of this uh, partial evaluation can be called as a local uh, maximum condition expected UJT. And we can always compute this quantity uh, if we just use the global function here. Of course, this is not what you want to do, but this is a definition. And uh, by using that notion, uh, we can define a sum model as a relevant subset of the original model for computing the previous expression called local maximum conditional expected utility projected on subset of decision variables and utility functions. So in this case, as inference diagram has observation and hidden variables, we also have a, a relevant observed variables for individual sum model as well as relevant hidden variables. In this example, uh, rather than going into detail about how to get here, so in this case, uh, relevant observation is gonna be only a subset of these uh, yellow nodes. In other words, we can, I, somehow later on we will see how, but uh, remove this unnecessary observation in the uh, problem uh, for the two decisions. And when it comes to hidden variables, uh, previously we may have to incorporate all the hidden variables like all others like C1, C2, D1, because they are not observed to these, these two decisions, but we can also identify that these are not relevant for uh, computing the local MEU uh, projected on this subproblem here. And lastly, I want to introduce one more notion on stability of the sum model. So uh, the uh, purpose of uh, having this notion is that sometimes if we just try to identify a sum uh, model by, uh, uh, from the inference diagram, it's possible that we have a situation where the LMU is depending on uh, the policy functions outside of the sum model. In this example, Let's say that we had a sum model over T3 and U3 utility function, and we had an observed variable only C6, but all rest of the variables are gonna be hidden variable in here. If that's the case, then even if we computed LMU over this subset of the variables, as I change policy function for T1 and D2, it's gonna change uh, the local maximum expected utility. So in this way, we cannot capture the sub problem. So, uh, the stable sum model is extending the sum model in the way that it removes those kind of free when the free decision variable in the relevant hidden variables. Now uh, we just uh, reviewed some definitions for the relevant observed variables and hidden variables, but here we move to the method for identifying sum models by using the graph. So first off, uh, by using the same uh, example. Uh, Given subset of decision variables, relevant, decision, uh, relevant utility functions are all descendants of the decisions. In other words, this U1 is not only really, uh, relevant for optimizing for the these two policy functions, which is a uh, well-known result in the past. And uh, when it comes to relevant observation uh, between the pair of decision and utility functions, uh, we can show, we can prove that uh, the subset of the, if the subset of the observed variables form a backdoor between this decision and UGT nodes, then it's gonna be a uh, uh, relevant observation. And for example, so uh, we may inspect, uh, if we had time, we, we can go over examples, but we can inspect that C3 and C6 are identified as a relevant observation. But if we either remove one of the two, then it's gonna be opening uh, some paths from the outside uh, so that it's gonna influence uh, decision in, in utility functions. 
Uh, however, we can we could remove C4 because it doesn't really opening any backdoor pass between these decisions and the GT functions. Of course, this is uh, somewhat different from the uh, causal uh, diagrams in causal inference, but uh, it's just using uh, the graph separation criteria out from the uh, causal inference. And when it comes to identifying hidden variables, we can also use a graph separation criteria uh, called front offset. So essentially, intuitively, what it does is that it's collecting the hidden random variables that's uh, medi mediating the inference between the, the decision and utility functions. So in other words, we don't have to actually compute all possible situations, but we can identify some models by just looking at the graph. And this procedure is independent to the uh, dynamic programming or uh, a variable elimination. So we can apply it to limited memory inference diagrams. And lastly, so by example, I will show uh, some of the tree clustering method here. So continuing from the previous example, let's say that we had an inference diagram, then we simply identify stable sum model from the last stage to the first stage. So for example, uh, given the, the three decision problem, so, uh, by using the previous example, we could have identified a stable sum model that's defined over two decision variable here. And then after identifying this, we can identify the first decision uh, uh, on the rest of the inference diagram. So one uh, particular thing that we can see from this uh, decomposition is that, so it's obvious that by using the previous graph separation method that we can capture the uh, sum model or sub problem in this way, but it also propagates a uh, value function or conditional expected utility value to the previous stage. So here, essentially, uh, we see that we introduced additional node V in this problem. So uh, this is gonna be the value function uh, that can propagate through the sub problems. And because this is a sum order tree, uh, we can now define a message passing over the sum order tree. And it's gonna be look like this. The backward message is gonna be a value function. And if, if needed, we can also define a forward function that's passing the uh, property functions between the uh, sharing uh, random variables in between two uh, sub problems. And then the idea is that once we came up with this uh, decomposition, we can solve each sub problem or some model by any exact algorithms. And what's going to be the benefit of doing this? Uh, the benefit is that uh, this decomposition captures the tightest one. Uh, and when it comes to inference diagram, it is equivalent to the MC deck, which is known to provide the tightest one. And then when it comes to limited memory inference diagram, uh, it also identifies a tree. So uh, that is not present in the earlier works. Uh, and then uh, by um, uh, having this tree decomposition, so this topic is more or less independent to the previous one, but now we can think of, uh, now we move to the upper bounding schemes for inference diagrams. So basically uh, in this part, the strategy is to reuse or extend existing decomposition bounds in progress graphical models. So desire is uh, as much, reuse as much as possible uh, for solid inference diagrams. So here uh, we're mostly using the generalized dual decomposition method for mixed inference over the joint graph decomposition or um, a, a mini bucket tree decomposition and so on. And uh, independently, alternative idea is uh, just exponentiate utility functions and uh, solve alternative problems to bound the maximum expected utility. So the first approach is extending uh, the valuation algebra. Uh, for example, previously I mentioned that uh, inference diagram can be solved by using alternative representation called uh, variation algebra that's processing both priority and uh, utility or expected utility functions at once. But in the previous work, uh, it didn't define this power to some elimination operator or LP norm based method, uh, elimination. So we just simply extend it in the way that it's providing better bounds because this LP norm often the case that uh, uh, apply absolute values on the utility functions. And unlike probability functions, 
this utility functions can be negative value anyway. So, so the idea is very simple. We just uh, add constant or extract it back on the utility functions. In that way, uh, algebraically, at least we can extend the variation algebra by using this uh, generalized summation operator. And then by having this uh, new operator, we can transport uh, the decomposition bound in the marginal map uh, into the instance diagram. Uh, there are some minor uh, adaptation that makes things work, but the idea is by reformulating and redefining uh, this algebra, uh, we can use the and extend the decomposition bounds in graphical model. And then in the end, uh, symbolically, we can write down the bounds for the MU in this way, in the following way. In other words, it looks very similar to the uh, upper bounds or decomposition bounds in probabilistic graphical model where it eliminates a variable after combination uh, this, this task can be upper bounded by switching the elimination and uh, the combination. And with a certain constraints that make things work. And uh, when we look at a concrete algorithm, so called, let's say, generalized your decomposition method for marginal map. So it first uh, transform the input graphical model to a cluster of the graph so that we can pass messages in between and so on. So because variation algebra allow us to do the same thing uh, by only changing the representation, we can obtain some more or less parallel things on the right hand side. So this one is for marginal map and then this one is uh, corresponding uh, MU in inference diagram. And then here uh, we have message passing algorithm in uh, marginal map task by simply uh, passing around the cost shifting functions and optimizing the weight parameters uh, for the associated with, it, with individual variables. So we can just uh, transport uh, the optimization problem or settings in the same way that we now pass pair of functions in the place of passing the one single function. And you can also optimize for the weights uh, that's uh, attached to each uh, variables for x1 and x4, etc. And we also have an opportunity to optimize for some uh, uh, constants that we introduced together with the uh, power sum elimination operator for the inference variables. And in the end, uh, what we have is some kind of optimization problem that we can minimize to tighten the upper bound. So uh, rather than going into the details about the expressions, the thing that I want to emphasize is that uh, the whole framework remains the same in the context of the inference diagrams. And we can obtain message passing algorithms by using numerical uh, optimization routines or gradient descent based methods for uh, uh, minimizing, minimizing these upper bounds. So those are gonna be the algorithmic details and so on. And we now move to the another alternative algorithm called weighted mini bucket elimination for inference diagram. So in this part, it's using another uh, uh, graph structure called mini bucket tree instead of the graph. And rather than solving the whole problem as a one single optimization problem, it interleaves uh, smaller, solving smaller optimization problem and then combine it with a variable elimination. So uh, this is also extending some uh, ideas in the earlier works in the probabilistic graphical models in the context of the inference diagrams by using new uh, uh, evaluation algebra uh, that's defining for the power sum elimination. So here we given this kind of uh, sub problems, uh, uh, we shift uh, uh, smaller uh, messages, uh, smaller uh, cause shift, uh, smaller parameters, small number of parameters between the split it problems and then we optimize it and then pass messages over the tree. So uh, in this way, uh, however, uh, this idea doesn't work naively because if we just do this, what we have in the hand is that it doesn't really define any objective function for the optimization problem because uh, the outcome from each individual layer of the uh, this bucket is going to be 
a function rather than being a single number that we cannot optimize for. So therefore, uh, here in this bounding scheme, what we use is a uh, kind of surrogate upper bounds uh, that uh, transform the uh, function fully down to the one single scalar value. By reusing the previous uh, uh, bounding scheme operating over the join graph. So it's reusing, reusing the first algorithm for defining the second bounding scheme here. And in this way, now we can uh, define optimization problem even with the objective function and some uh, parameters that we can minimize. And here, so by writing down all things uh, as an optimization functions, we can come up with a uh, gradient-based method or numerical optimization method that's uh, packing this bound. So in this way, we can also extend the previous decomposition bounds in the context of the inference dialects. So, and the third one that we are moving to the next algorithm is to, uh, relying on a different idea. So here, we just simply exponentiate utility functions. When it comes to stochastic optimal control, it's very common to see that people are, are using this expression that's modifying or transforming the value function or expected utility on the left-hand side to a log in the form of log partition function. So it, this is essentially log sum product of all functions. And this holds as in limit as this uh, small constants log goes to zero. And yeah, this is very common in uh, pass integral control and duality in control and etc. And by taking this idea, we can also uh, uh, give upper bound rather than uh, the in in equality in the limit uh, by applying Jensen's inequality applied to the exponentiated functions. Here. And, and, and here we get the uh, final uh, upper, bound, upper bound here. So essentially what we see is that, so on the left-hand side, this is just the uh, maximum expected utility, really computing maximum of the expected, expected sum of utility functions. But here, after exponentiating everything, it became productive of uh, uh, multiplicative functions. And here we have the hidden quality functions that's performing expectation and we take low on this. So in other words, we can now use any uh, algorithms that's computing log partition function for the graphical model to bound the maximum expected function here. So here we have to do nothing but just exponentiate utility functions. So uh, it, it, it's quite <laughs> hard to say this is an algorithm, but uh, to be explicit, so when we want to reuse uh, the generalized duality comparison method, then we just simply, simply exponentiate and uh, use the same algorithm here. Of course, we have to take log in front to get uh, the, uh, get the um, upper bound. And again, same, if we move from the join graph from the uh, mini bucket tree, then of course we can use uh, corresponding algorithms in marginal and task by simply after exponentiating the utility functions. Here, one of the reasons why I'm just presenting the uh, algorithms based on the join graph as well as mini bucket tree is that in empirical study in the past, in the graphical model inference task, uh, both uh, uh, decomposition methods known to provide a very good uh, performance or very tight bounds compared to other uh, decomposition methods like uh, factor graphs or things like that. But that's going to be uh, too much technical details. And now we move to just to show some uh, basic empirical evaluation results to see which one performs better than the others. And the problem sets that we uh, used is uh, reflecting various domains in uh, sequential decision making problems like MDPs, MDPs, and random configuration, random networks, and Bayesian networks. In these problems, uh, we can see the difficulty of the problems by checking the parameter called induced width of the problems. And then it's mostly relying on in between around 30 or 44 difficult problems. In other words, if we wanted to solve this as an exact algorithm, it's gonna cost memory exponential to this number. And now how does the problem that we cannot solve by variable elimination? And uh, 
in the context of solving perfect recall inference diagrams, uh, we compare here, this table only compares four methods. Uh, the first two is uh, combining the sum model tree decomposition and uh, generalized dual decoding for marginal map uh, after exponentiating the utility function. And the second one is adopting the another algorithm in marginal map uh, after exponentiating the utility functions. And the rest of the two, called the J joint graph decomposition bound for inference diagram or JGDID, is the algorithm that we saw in the first part uh, by extending the variation algebra and, and extending the GDD algorithms for uh, inference diagram. And then the next one is about uh, uh, more or less parallel to the mini bucket version uh, that we saw in the second uh, part of uh, uh, this presentation on the upper bounds. So overall, uh, rather than going into the uh, detailed numbers, in summary, we see that uh, the exponentiated utility scheme provides a best of a bounds. Uh, and a simple scheme scales better. And uh, we can uh, see some kind of uh, convergence behavior together uh, with the bounds. And then uh, the exponentiated method often uh, provide a faster convergence uh, compared with the uh, variation algebra-based method. Uh, that's because uh, I didn't speak out clearly while presenting the uh, previous methods that's relying on the variation algebra, but they are defining non-convex optimization problem often comes with constraints. Uh, that's very difficult to optimize, but when it comes to the method that's using exponentiated utility function, it's uh, just a normal uh, marginal map. Convex, unconstrained optimization problem that's very easier to compute. And it's going to be similar for other types of the algorithms overall. And uh, when we compare the uh, quality of the upper bounds in limited memory inference diagram, here we don't have any other algorithms that's providing upper bounds. So uh, this table just comparing the theoretical bounds that came out from the paper. And this one is using uh, one of the uh, upper bounding scheme that's combining some model 3D composition and weighted mini bucket with moment matching very simple algorithm with high I bounds. Uh, so the proposed scheme shows that the upper bounds is gonna be something like 20 or 40 for most of the problems, small, but the theoretical bounds is something like a million or billion and so on. So we see that uh, uh, the proposed method indeed provide informative upper bounds compared with the theoretical upper bounds as in many other cases. And uh, before moving to the next uh, large problem, and I didn't show uh, the comparison against the, with the early approaches like translation-based methods or information annexation based method. But when it comes to translation-based method, it, it inflates problem uh, large enough that uh, existing algorithm cannot actually provide any meaningful upper bounds. So the situation may look like very similar to this, case, this kind of cases. So our proposed methods providing some kind of informative numbers, but uh, the translation-based method provides uh, 10 to the something that's not telling you anything useful at all. And now, because the previous uh, problems are so, uh, solving more or less easy problems, uh, this case is evaluating other problems uh, that's uh, in probabilistic planning community. So this is very famous uh, MDP PAMDP uh, benchmark domain called the system administration domain, uh, where we have a very large number of decision variables and uh, uh, chance variables. Uh, rather than com comparing with other algorithms, here we evaluated lower bounds by using online planner and evaluated upper bounds by one of the scheme that we proposed and to see the uh, gap uh, between the optimal uh, unknown optimal MU and the upper bound. So we can estimate uh, 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 the factor of approximation by looking at this gap. And when it comes to system on the administration MDP domain, so this is not a small easy problem where we can see that the induced is already reaching 100 and the number of variables reaching beyond 1,000 for the largest problem. And 
uh, the gap is going to be something like 30%. And when it comes to PAMDP problems, which is more difficult than MDP problem because of the partial observability. So the induced bits is already came reaching to very high number. It's clustering everything in a single cluster more or less in the end because it's PAMDP. And the number of variables is gonna be something like more than 1500 variables. And still we see that the gap between the lower bound and upper bound is gonna be less than 50%. In other words, uh, our bounding scheme can provide uh, the upper bound within the factor of two in these domain problems. So to the best of our knowledge, uh, we have to evaluate many methods in stochastic programming or some uh, mixed integer and linear uh, programming based approaches. But uh, to the best of our knowledge, this upper bound is the highest bit one. Uh, and to conclude, uh, in this talk, uh, we presented a uh, tree clustering framework for inference diagram. So it's extending the graphical model framework in the context of inference diagram and limited memory inference diagram. And uh, it offers graph-based methods for identifying tree decomposition. And here we also have a message passing algorithm in the form of hierarchical message passing algorithm because it can delegate uh, solving sub problems into another message passing algorithms. And so on. And then we also provided a simple and scalable bounding scheme for inference diagram by exponentiating utility functions. And on top of this, our uh, future direction is going to be uh, use this kind of more informative upper bounds uh, for finding the MU and optimal policy functions in inference diagram, limited memory inference diagram, combined with heuristic search. And there are many other relaxation ideas in probabilistic graphical models. And we can export, uh, transport all those ideas in the context of some other 3D compositions, things like some other graph decomposition. And lastly, we can also think about the some other tree clustering framework for multi agent inference diagram. That's a uh, graphical model for the gains. So uh, let me conclude this talk and then uh, thanks very much for attending. Yeah. and. Uh, maybe uh, I, I'm not sure if we have a question, but uh, yeah, yeah, I can answer the questions. So, um, so Jung Kyu, I'm, yeah. I'm curious that you know, um, yes, um, a lot of of your examples were. MDPs and palm DPs. Yes. And of course, in, in that space, right, there's a whole lot of specialized work in algorithms that's just thinking about MDPs and palm DPs. Yes. And and so you're in that last example, the thing you called lower, I mean, would that look like a a, a state-of-the-art method in that space? Or I'm just I'm trying to understand, like, think about how this would relate to 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 the you know the, the more specialized palm DP literature. Mm, uh, so first off, uh, let's see. So uh, of course there are uh, tons of works in this sequential decision making problems on the context of planning, reinforcement learning, and so on. But by limiting the scope to the uh, spe specific uh, set of algorithms for solving, let's say, PAMDP. And what I see from the, as far as I know, many of excluding the reinforcement learning at here. Uh, what I see from the PAMDP approach is uh, transform PAMDP as a continuous MDP uh, because uh, uh, it's gonna be uh, uh, performing MDP of the uh, uh, belief states. And there people mostly apply uh, function approximation uh, for the belief states and so on. And then those are known to be very efficient but at the same time, uh, there is a, some kind of limitation to the scalability. But, and the situation in the MDP, it's gonna be something like, uh, uh, depending on how people use the underlying representation. So these algorithms are very depending on the way we represent or define problems. In this example, we, I didn't mention explicitly, but this is called a factored state 
factor state and action space. Means that we have we have access to the decision variables and state variables. And there are two major branches of the representation. One is really using factor representation as shown in inference diagram. And actually majority of the algorithms is not using factor representation. Sometimes it's not clear how we can get to those factor representation and so on. So uh, to compare with uh, existing algorithms, we have to match the representations, but uh, inference diagram is uh, relying on the factored state and action representation. And then many of other works are, are non-factored. So if I simply naively flatten all this factored representation to uh, the other representation, it's gonna blow up a representation too big so that those algorithms will not work anymore. And on the other hand, uh, comes from flat representation. Sometimes it's not at all clear Maybe it's maybe even impossible to obtain compact factor representation and so on. So I hope this may answer some of your questions. And it's very difficult to see upper bounding schemes for uh, these sequential decision making problems. Uh, I'm not saying that it, it's, it's not uh, possible or there's nothing, but most of the things are entering through mixed integer and linear programming encodings because. Uh, at that point, we have optimization problem, and then at that point, we can have relaxation and so on. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. And yeah. <laughs> and yeah, this is, uh, let me just, yeah, a few more yeah, questions. So, so this is about inference diagrams, but uh, it's also about uh, how we can decompose uh, sequential decision making problems if we have access to the factored representation. And uh, in this presentation, uh, uh, we saw that uh, we have an exact decomposition by uh, assembling uh, some model as a tree, but uh, we can also think of relaxing that kind of tree, clustering as a graph, and leading to the other kinds of uh, decomposition based methods in other planning or reinforcement learning and so on. So there are many connections between graphical models and planning or reinforcement learning here, I, th I think. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thanks, yeah. So if uh, it's already 56, so. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay, uh, if there are no more questions, let me thank Junkyo uh, mm -hmm. for a great talk. If we were able to clap, we would clap. <laughs> Thanks very much for allowing me a uh, you know, slot for the presentation here. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah. Great job, sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.